little dog. Mm, all right, guys. Well, the sun is going down over the collapse on this now gloomy night. It is... <coughs> well, I'm recording this on Wednesday, August 23rd, 2023. Not sure when it will come out. We are uh, heading into part three of the single greatest, most spot-on essay I have ever encountered. Fifteen years of doomer scrolling, of doom scrolling. I have been waiting, waiting, and I am not surprised that now my single biggest collapsitarian hero on the planet, the number one, uh, <coughs> my number one hero, William Reese, ecologist William Reese, has come up with the essential uh, collapse 101 anybody trying to figure out what is going on on this planet, uh, having any doubt about how doomed we are and that we are not coming out of this. This is going nowhere but down. And uh, so we have, <coughs> let's see, what have we talked about? We have, uh, this is a, uh, an essay from some outfit called Word that shockingly I found in the mainstream media this morning in Yahoo News from that odious hopium rag called Popular Mechanics. This is completely uh, off base for Popular Mechanics. Uh, my... My entire opinion of popular mechanics has uh, has gone through a, a, a quite an evolution today, <coughs> and popular mechanics um, linked me over to this long essay from an outfit simply called World, where we found this plum called The Human Ecology of Overshoot, Why a Major Population Correction is Inevitable. And I am dividing this up into five videos. We've gone over the abstract in the introduction. We've gone over the chapter titled The Nature and Nurture of Overshoot. And we have read the chapter about the population connection. And now we are heading into the next chapter titled On Energy Gradients, Homo Sapiens as a Dissipative Structure. And uh, I will put the link uh, on to... Uh, this jaw-dropping expose on why we're so doomed and encourage you to read this yourself, but I will just keep on reading it from beginning to end. So we are right in the middle on energy gradients, Homo sapiens as a dissipative structure. And we're starting out with a quote than none other than U.S. President Richard Althouse Nixon from November of 1973. Take it away, Richard Nixon. Quote, we, I th meaning Americans, we use 30% of all the energy in the United States. That isn't bad. That is good. That means that we are the richest, strongest people in the world and that we have the highest standard of living in the world. That is why we need so much energy and may it always be that way. There you go. Thank you, Tricky Dick. 
November of 1973. When was he, uh, when did he resign? Not too much longer. All right, take it away. Take it away, Bill Reese. The history of human population growth, which is what we talked about in the last video, underscores a key factor to understanding the eco-crisis, one that is generally ignored by economists and demographers. The population bomb was assembled during the Industrial Revolution and exploded in the 19th century with the expanding use of fossilized organic matter that took hundreds of millions of years to accumulate. The wealth creation and technologies enabled by fossil fuels, including fertilizers and pesticides, reduced or eliminated various historically important forms of negative feedback, freeing the world's human population to grow exponentially for the very first time. The fossil-powered explosion of the human enterprise triggered the most significant period of global degradation in 250,000 years of human evolutionary history. Understanding the role of energy also helps illuminate humanity's future prospects. Following on mathematician Ludwig Boltzmann's observation that the Darwinian struggle for existence is essentially a competition for available useful energy, mathematical ecologist Alfred Lotka proposed in the 1920s that successful systems, individuals, species, and ecosystems were those that maximized their appropriations and effective use of available energy technically known as exergy, <coughs> from their environments. Somewhat later, ecologist Howard Odium refined and formalized the basic concept as the maximum power principle. In essence, natural selection favors systems that evolve or self-organize in ways that maximize their energy intake and power output in the service of self-maintenance, growth, and reproduction. Systems that markedly fail to maximize their useful power output would be selected out. Homo sapiens are arguably the archetypal demonstration of maximum power. While other animal species are dependent on bodily endosomatic energy obtained from ingested biomass, humans are uniquely capable of using supplemental out-of-body exosomatic energy towards systems growth and reproduction. The history of civilization traces a sequence of external energy sources beginning with fire, flowing water and wind, and evolving through fossil fuels, hydroelectricity, and other so-called modern renewables to nuclear power. <clears throat> Comparing societies from hunter-gatherers through farmers to modern techno-industrial <clears throat> culture shows a pattern of exosomatic energy use, increasing from 20 joules per person per year through 60 joules per person per year 
to 300 joules per person per year, respectively. The richest, most powerful, and thus successful by contemporary criteria, cultures, societies, and nations have always been those that maximize their appropriations and effective use of available energy. As noted earlier, the explosive increase of gross world product beginning in the 19th century was energized by fossil fuels. It is not by chance that the GDP of modern nations remains tightly correlated with petroleum consumption and that the poorest half of humanity accounts for less than 20% of global energy use. As matters stand, the modern world remains largely dependent on the unmatched energy density of fossil fuels. Despite the hyperbole surrounding the rapid development of alternative, allegedly renewable energy sources, 82% of the world's primary energy was provided by coal, oil, and natural gas in 2021. Non-hydro renewables, mostly wind turbines and solar panels, the recipients of most new investment, provided less than 7%. In effect, fossil fuels powered the world economy for 290 of 365 days in 2021, compared with 24 days by all non-hydro renewables, wind, solar, biomass, and geothermal combined. I don't know if he's going to come back and explain his asterisk uh, about hydro. Uh, continued fossil fuel dependence is hugely problematic and not just because of climate change. The many components of modern techno-industrial civilization from individual peoples and industries to entire cities and nation states, indeed, the entire human enterprise share the characteristics of dissipative structures the term coined by Ilya Priogene to describe processes of non-equilibrium self-organization in living systems. Dissipative structures develop and evolve in response to energy gradients, which they subsequently dissipate i.e. consume and degrade to self-produce and maintain themselves. Indeed, self-organization in open systems, systems able to exchange energy and materials with their environment, requires the dissipation of energy. The human enterprise is a complex of overlapping, highly structured, non-linear, open subsystems, each functioning in far from thermodynamic equilibrium. Thermodynamic equilibrium describes the state of a system in which there is no structure or gradients and thus no internal flows of matter or energy. Thermodynamic equilibrium can also exist between a system and its environment. In, uh, in either case, no measurable changes can occur. In contrast, self-producing non-equilibrium systems 
e.g. individual living cells, the human body, economic processes are capable of dynamic change, including net flows between the systems and their environments, and the permanent dissipation of energy and matter. Such systems are thus said to be operating far from equilibrium. <coughs> As noted, the modern human enterprise has evolved in its present form largely in response to the steep energy gradient represented by fossil fuels, which it has been dissipating on an accelerating curve, particularly over the past two centuries. Half the fossil fuels ever consumed have been burned in just the past 30 to 35 years. It is not only fossil fuels. Fossil-fueled industrialization has increased the world's consumption of many minerals and metals by several orders of magnitude, so the best deposits of many finite and non-replenishing, non-renewable resources have also been largely depleted and dissipated. Resource scarcity may well accelerate industrial civilization's descent from overshoot. The continued growth or even the steady state operation of the human enterprise thus depends entirely on the continuity of this energy flow, i.e. on the maintenance of a comparative of a comparably steep energy gradient, and this assumes other resources will also be available. However, there is a problem. Yep, there is a problem. It is becoming increasingly evident that a quantitatively equivalent energy transition from fossil fuels to so-called green electricity sources on a climate overshoot friendly schedule is not likely to occur. It is true that there has been impressive expansion of electricity generation by wind turbine and solar panel installations in some countries in recent years. However, as noted, fossil fuels still provided 82% of the world's primary energy and even 61% of the world's electrical power in 2021. <clears throat> Wind turbines and solar installations did give the world 10% of its electrical energy up to 12% by 2023, but since electricity is only about 19% of final energy consumption, wind and solar electricity account for only about 2.3% of consumers' total energy supply. This, after several decades, of increasing deployment, and uh, I guess that William Reese didn't have time to go into the, you know, talking about how the the concept of the expanding pie of global energy demand that the entire energy pie is getting bigger and bigger so you know at the end of 10 years you might it might look like we're getting uh, more of the pie powered by uh, these horseshit renewables when in fact uh, it's we're still 
using more fossil fuels than we were using to create uh, the percentage of the pie, a smaller pie 10 years ago. He doesn't have time to talk about everything and all these other inconvenient truths and bright green lies about this uh, unadulterated horseshit energy trans... Uh, <clears throat> whatever that word is. Uh, <coughs> okay. One more paragraph in this chapter. Renewable green energy clearly has a long way to go. In some years, additions to renewable capacity do... Okay, here we go. I spoke too soon. Additions to renewable capacity do not keep up with the growth in total demand for energy. So I should have just let uh, an interrupting Bill Reese. As we phase out or run out of fossil fuels, some analysts suggest that the world community should be preparing for a steep energy descent a future with markedly lower, as much as 50% lower, and increasingly unreliable energy supplies. The obvious but often unspoken corollary is that the weakening of our energy gradient will be accompanied by a massive simplification of that greatest of dissipative structures, the human enterprise. Certainly, there will be a corresponding plunge in gross world product. We should also anticipate global shortages of food and all the other fossil fuel dependent material resources needed to run modern civilization. And we have not yet accounted for the simultaneous consequences of accelerated global heating. Should modern techno-industrial culture maintain its present course, a major population correction seems inevitable. And so we're going to come back in the next installment and hear about the world's response to overshoot, or obviously the world's complete lack of overshoot, because nobody knows what overshoot means. And this includes a whole lot of doomers have no clue what overshoot means. Yes? But anyway, I've got to wrap this up because the yes, because the mosquitoes are starting to overshoot. And my little dog has a collapsed trachea that needs attention. Get out there and uh, tend to your collapsed trachea while you still can. Bye, guys.